Talk about yeah. the British um, uh, reversal. Yeah. What is it, and and how does this yeah. take place? Yeah. Good. So actually, the correct term is diabetes remission. So I think it's. Uh, I know that the term reversal is used. It's very in the public, common. Yes. Uh, but the correct term is what is called diabetic remission. So that simply means that you are in uh, an individual who has been diagnosed with diabetes based on the cutoffs that you've discussed, but then you're able to institute an aggressive diet and lifestyle uh, management protocol. Now, with regard to the diet, uh, we have to differentiate two distinctive terms. So people look at uh, how they consume their food. If you look at the actual quantity, you can either use kilocalories or you can use grams of carbohydrates. So the big shift now has been towards grams of carbohydrates. Number one, it's easier to understand. So it's normally easier for us to think in terms of grams of carbohydrates as opposed to kilocalories. So for example, it's very hard for you to give an estimate. If I have a plate of rice with uh, a plate of rice with beans, for example, it's very hard for me to contextualize how much, how yes. much calories I'm actually consuming, but it's easier for me to contextualize grams of carbohydrates. And this has been simplified now because we have books that actually give you, uh, we have a book called uh, Wild, Wild Foods, Carbs and Cows. Very simple book that has all the foods, even what is in our local setting here, and it will tell you that if I consume one chapati, it's equivalent to, for example, 15 grams of carbohydrate, which also I can convert it to a patient to make it more simpler into teaspoons of sugar. So I'll give you a good example just to make it easier to understand. If you put half a plate of rice, uh, half a plate of rice in front of you, that half a plate of rice uh, is equivalent to 14 teaspoons of sugar. Now that's an easier way of converting grams. We now convert to patients into the equivalent of teaspoons of sugar. Because for the patient, that graphic representation is much more easier to understand. If they know that if they consume this amount of rice, and they're consuming the equivalent of 14 teaspoons of sugar, that puts alarm bells into their heads. So we think about grams of carbohydrate. So we have what is called ketogenic diet, but you're talking about restriction of carbohydrate to less than 100 grams per 24 hours or even more accurately, less than 50 grams per 24 hours. Now, to give an idea of how little that is, so number one, if you, for example, consume two slices of bread in the morning, you've had 30 grams, okay? That means you're left with, uh, if you're doing a proper keto, you're left with 20 grams for the day. That means that if you consume an apple at 11 o'clock, you've had another 15 grams, okay? And now you're at 45, you're left with only five, five. grams, yeah. That's to give you an idea. But most times, 100 grams is a good leeway for most people. That means at least you can consume one chapati at lunchtime and probably, uh, again, very minimal carbohydrate at dinner time or even no carbohydrate at all at dinner time. So in keto diet, we increase our vegetable intake and our protein intake. There was this famous misnomer or misconception that carbohydrates, uh, the, the, that proteins, are the ones that cause high cholesterol. So for example, your cholesterol comes from eggs or meat. Uh, meat. That's not the case. Your cholesterol actually comes from your high intake of carbs. Because if you consume high intake of carbs, these are high energy foods, your body will use the glucose that it requires for your day-to-day -day activity, for your growth and development, and your exercise. Again, if you're not exercising much, it means that you can consume very high amounts of carbohydrate. The body just takes what it needs and you have a huge balance of calories that the body needs to figure out where to take. So what will it do? It will convert that into your fat tissues. So that will convert it into your fat stores. And that's actually what causes the high carbohydrate levels. So actually things like eggs do not cause cholesterol and they are safer options for your breakfast as opposed to eat, eating a whole bowl of cereal and two slices of bread. Is there anything like too many eggs? There's no, there's nothing like <laughs> So you can, <laughs> yeah. you can indulge. So we say convert as much of your food into vegetables and proteins, mm -hmm. and that is a much safer way of going to a ketogenic diet, and that can cause reversal. At the same time, remember, you're also going to have your exercise. So you're going to, you're at least going to have your 30 minutes of exercise per day, five times a week. Uh, we now have uh, uh, diabetes remission uh, diets that are being done by a, a lot of our colleagues in the field. A gentleman who's pioneered this in the, in the local settings, Dr. Dan Katambo, and he runs a very successful remission program, which we actually refer clients to. And they're taken through the basics of how to customize their meals through the day and how to minimize on carbohydrate intake in the course of the day. Of course, that also means cutting out all sources of, you know, you know like sweetened drinks. So, you know, these are things that people consume frequently. 
So the more you cut out your sodas and juices, again, the better it is for you in terms of achieving remission. Okay. Yeah. There is very low calorie diet, which again is more complex, but that simply means that you're restricting your total calories in 24 hours to less than 800 kilocalories per day. But we are shifting away from that because we want a model that any person can understand simply. And thinking about it in grams of carbohydrate and teaspoons of sugar is quite simple. And now we have information. In fact, the Ministry of, uh, of Health, Non-Communicable Disease Department, uh, Department of Dietetics and Nutrition, have done a splendid job in actually documenting the carb content of every local dish in the country. Right from uh, Mubakoi to Nguashe, to, to, to Ndoma, to Mahambri from the coast, to even blood, uh, which is consumed by the Maasai community. Every single local food, you can now get information about the exact grams of carbohydrates. So this information is there. It's freely accessible online. And uh, the books, like I said, also give you pictures so that you can be able to visualize. If I serve this amount of food, then uh, you know it, it's, it's, equal, it's equal to this amount of grams of carbohydrate or teaspoons of sugar equivalent. Mm -hmm.